With everything that's going on at the moment, the world can feel like an exhausting place. So for today's video, I'm just gonna chill the F out and see what's on my new favorite streaming service. Quibi! Quibi, Quibi, Quibi. Only on Quibi. Quibi is quick bites. Quibi is an app. What is Quibi and why should anyone in this room or anywhere care? Quibi is a brand new subscription-based streaming service that's mobile only. And I know that sounds sh but don't worry because it's actually going to be really good. Because it's basically exactly the same as HBO. And it's not dissimilar to what HBO did in the 1990s. Our ambition is to do what HBO did in terms of narrative storytelling. If you're wondering who the Quibi this is, it's Jeffrey Katzenberg. Hollywood corporate royalty and Emperor Lord of the Turtle People. He was the producer behind some of Disney's greatest hits, my personal favorite animated film ever, and also Shark Tale. <coughs> now Mr. Katzenberg is doing a quibby alongside Meg Whitman, former CEO of eBay. The company raised nearly $2 billion in initial funding before the app had even launched. Wow, with that kind of cash and clout, Quibi was inevitably going to be the best short-form subscription-based mobile-only streaming service of all time. But what makes Quibi different? Well, first of all, and most importantly, Quibi was going to have celebrity stars and big Hollywood budgets, inevitably making all that cheapo, user-generated content on the internet look like the garbage that it really was. As good as it was inevitably going to be, Quibi still had a tough fight ahead of it. After all, it was entering a saturated marketplace. You know, we would say to you that what we're setting out to do falls somewhere between improbable and impossible. Mm -hmm. That just happens to be our home address. Quibi was also preparing to wow audiences with its technological innovations. How could you hate the internet? It's like the greatest invention of the 21st century. Yeah, it's also how my kids found out there are thousands of hamsters buried alive because they're not really dead, they're just hibernating. That's right, on Quibi you could watch stuff long ways and the right way. Wow! With our entire cast featured in a one clever moment that works equally well in landscape or portrait. While this seems like a stupid gimmick that solves a problem that didn't exist in the first place, it's actually really smart because it targets Quibi's most likely enthusiastic audience, people who are too stupid to know how to turn their wrists sideways. But wait, there's more! Beautiful full screen images like you've never seen before. Full screen? Oh wow we! I thought Cyberpunk had been delayed. The future is here, people. Quibi could afford to utilize the whole goddamn screen because they had convinced all these big boys to invest in them. With the unlimited power granted to them by Hollywood and Silicon Valley's greatest investors, Quibi launched with an insanely expensive marketing campaign. They went bananas with the YouTube ad spend and even paid for a Super Bowl spot. <laughs> Where's the car? Greg, where are you? I'll be there in a Quibi. A what? With most of these ads focused on teaching people what the hell a Quibi was anyway. You're dangerously low on air. Relax, Commander. We've got at least a Quibi left. Quinn's here. <laughs> Case adjourned. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to die. But with Quibi's mind-boggling array of celebrity-packed content, it's easy to understand why they'd want to. A quibby then is about five to 10 minutes, which is perfect because I'm about to go take a quibby now. One of Quibi's biggest shows is Most Dangerous Game, starring Liam Hemsworth as a down on his luck property developer called Dodge Times. Dodge Times. Thanks for coming by. Mr. Sellers, thanks for seeing me. My pleasure, call me Miles. I wish you could call me Dodge, what a cool name. As well as suffering from cool guy name syndrome, he also has a non-specific brain issue that makes him break stuff. This is exactly what makes Quibi so goddamn essential. It's this kind of ham-fisted symbolism that only Hollywood can do right. Dodge's life is falling apart, you see. He's got a kid on the way and bills to pay. He's in a tight spot, so the only logical thing for him to do is agree to be hunted for sport by everyone's favourite Nazi. Every hour you survive, more money is being wired into your bank account, and that continues until the game ends. 
The rest of the show follows Dodge as he dodges various stereotypical stock psychopaths who've paid for the opportunity to hunt and kill this A-list celebrity's sibling. When Quibi launched, they understood they needed to offer people something as an incentive to join. They began by offering Quibi for free for three months. After that, it would be just five bucks per month, but at least you wouldn't have to see any more ads. Oh, wait, no, you had to pay extra for that. And despite this, they managed to get over 900,000 people to sign up in the first three days of the app's launch, which was not bad, but it was far less than Katzenberg and co had hoped for. After the free trial ended though, only about 72,000 subscribers decided that the content they were getting was worth paying for. And despite their commercials being everywhere, it seemed like people just weren't talking about Quibi. Which was a shame because they were missing out on some high quality short form content. breakdown. My boyfriend's sex doll is talking to me. But I have news for you, babe. We're all sex dolls until we topple the patriarchy. That's great, you're a feminist sex doll. This is Dummy, starring Anna Kendrick and a CGI succubus with a thing for underaged boys. Who is that? He's like 14. So? I'm seven. Cody soon befriends the terrifying sex doll because it turns out they have more in common besides the person who makes sex inside them. Fuck off, Barbara. You know, you call yourself a feminist, but you hate other women. What? No, I love other women. And if you think this looks like a shallow failure that confuses grossness for genuine boldness, you're wrong because it's actually really progressive. You ready to do this? What? My pussy. I've got like years worth of Dan's pull milk congealed up in there. Okay. This show was clearly the loving result of intense Hollywood market research into millennial watching habits. Because this is exactly what millennials like me want, to have their general values repeated back to them by a lifeless imitation of a human being. You are the shitty feminist. I hear you doing all types of like rape role play, you twisted little bitch. Okay. Jeff and Meg made sure Quibi was laser focused on the millennial age bracket. And we're creating content with the millennial audience in mind the stars and stories that they love, and we're delivering it to them in a way they actually watch in quick bite chapters on the go. These boomers saw all those kids who wouldn't get off their gosh darn phones and decided to make content for them. Of course, by the time the app was launched in April, the commute had been like totally canceled, meaning that perhaps COVID-19's greatest victim of all was Quibi. At least that's what Katzenberg wanted the New York Times to believe when they brought up the app's painfully small and inactive user base. Surely it was just a coincidence that literally every other streaming service had seen enormous growth during this period. Quibi's dead on arrival reception had nothing to do with its content, business model, or all the money that it was needlessly spaffing away. After 30 years in showbiz, Katzenberg had clearly gotten used to having a Hollywood marketing budget. Quibi initially intended to spend $470 million on advertising in just its first year, as they were apparently pathologically hell-bent on turning Quibi into a corporate mega-verb like Kleenex or Uber or Google hoping that it would catch on if people heard a world-famous Twitter account say it. You got this, let's go. Don't be a psychopath, Mark. I'll go for a quibby. <sighs> I will see you at the mall. Just four months after it launched, it was pretty clear that Katzenberg and co had quibbied all in their pants. They persisted in comparing their subscription model to services like Netflix and Disney+. Plus, But this was a complete misunderstanding of the market that they were actually entering. Their real competition was free, shareable, and you know, good. Well, most of it. And this has always been Hollywood's biggest failure. Their total blinding inability to know the difference between something that's good and something that's expensive. But that wasn't gonna be the case with Quibi because everything on there was gold. Stuff like Barkitecture. This four-legged sidekick needs his own cool digs. We need something to represent his humble roots and his Hollywood lifestyle. That's right, it's only on Quibi that you can watch Hollywood weirdos who are so out of touch with reality that they see nothing tasteless about building bedroom-sized puppy palaces in their back garden. 
That's unbelievable. The dogs are gonna love it. My man. Who wants some rosé? If you didn't like that, how about Murder House Flip? A bog-standard property makeover show that also promises to satisfy your insatiable true crime bloodlust. This man killed his wife right here where my husband is sitting. It's almost impossible to believe what happened here. The absolute must-watch episode is the one where they refurb the bathroom where a husband had chopped up his wife into little bits. You take a shower where he dismembered her. But maybe you're looking for something that has the gravitas and star power that only Quibi can provide. In that case, I actually recommend Sam Raimi's 50 States of Fright. The show aimed to tell 50 spooktacular stories loosely adapting local urban legends from all 50 American states. All in all, they released two, Michigan and Florida. And the idea of a creator-driven horror anthology actually sounded pretty fresh, especially the first couple of times someone suggested it. In the first episode, we follow a lumberjack and his vain, jewelry-obsessed wife who gets caught in a tree-related accident. <laughs> oh god! How's she gonna watch Quibi now? Oh. Luckily, her husband has a side hustle making revolutionary robo-prosthetics. Can you really make that? I think so. That might seem completely contrived, but you have to remember all these episodes are just eight minutes long. There's just not enough time for everything to make sense. Can you make it out of gold? Are you serious? Just half a quibby later, she's got a fancy new C-3PO arm, but it does lead to some issues. As long as your body keeps absorbing the gold through your skin, there's very little I can do. You've got to take off that prosthetic. No. I can't take off my golden arm. When I die, bury me with my golden arm. She croaks, but because he's gone into all kinds of debt building his wife this golden arm, he has to engage in some good old fashioned spousal grave robbing. At this point, it turns into a standard avenging ghost story. And dare I say it, it actually gets kind of good. It's obviously dopey, but it's self-aware enough to be enjoyable, and it's genuinely scary at points. It's officially my favourite show on Quibi. But one half-decent horror story was not enough to save the ailing streaming service. It only took 30,000 Quibbies before the company completely collapsed on the 21st of October. Katzenberg announced that Quibi was quits in an all-hands video call to all 250 of the company's employees. He announced that everyone would be paid severance and that they should listen to Get Back Up Again from the Trolls soundtrack to lift their spirits as they cleared out their desks. I feel like complete shit. I just want Quibi back. Quibi might be gone, but its spirit lives on in all the lives that it touched. Goodbye, Quibi. You were like a candle in the wind, with us not for a long time or a good time, but a time nonetheless. Stay hydrated and don't let the bastards grind you down. Don't forget to hit the bell, subscribe, like, all that stuff. That'd be great. I'd really like that. Oh, full screen? Wow-wee! I thought Cyberpunk had been delayed! <laughs>